All right, so here we have our controller program. So I have a, a 1769L23E QB1 Compact Logic controller uh, with revision 20.19. And I have this. This has two uh, built-in embedded I/O modules. The first one is a 24-volt DC input, and the second is a 24-volt DC output. Then we have a relay module attached, and then we have our analog module. Now, our analog module, we have inputs. Channels 0 and 1 are enabled, so I've checked those to enable those. I've selected those to be 0 to 20 milliamps with a filter of 5 hertz and data format of engineering units. Now remember for this, the engineering units is actually microamps. So they multiply it by a, a, a thousand they multiply the milliamp coming in by a thousand so we can get a good resolution. So then I'm going to go to program tags. I come over here to program tags. And w one of the things with this software is you want to make sure you widen these uh, little boxes so that you have room. Now I'm actually uh, had it running. It's running live at the moment. I'm going to go offline for a little bit. And so I created a virtual start and stop here uh, that are of type booleans because these are just going to be start and stop bits that we're going to use with the factory talk a little bit later and then I have um, my start and stop buttons wired into the controller so remember aliases are for tags that are mapped to the physical real world so these are actually physically mapped out to the real world and if it's just something inside of the controller then there's no alias for that all right so a bit has of a data type boolean that's just one bit it's either a zero or a one on or off I also created three floating point real decimal point variables one's called weight left one's called weight right and then the total weight so remember, we've got two load cells here. We're making up a little balance beam weigh, weighing system. So we have a load cell on each end. So I have weight one, which is on the left side, weight two, which is on the right side. And then the total weight will be the sum of those. And then I created um, some tags for my actual analog inputs from the load cells. I've got load, uh, the left load cell which is channel 0 and the right load cell which is channel 1 and again those are integers but the value that's coming in is actually uh, will be a microamp value so uh, right now I'm not doing anything with my contact bits start stop bits in here but I do have my uh, weight uh, one, so I have a compute statement which is weight one and a compute statement which is weight two and then I use an add block to add the two together to get the total weight. Now the numbers in here are old numbers so I need to scale this um, so I'm going to have to come back and scale this so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, go back online. I've already downloaded this so I, it's okay to go online. Most of the time you actually want to download it. If you've made any changes, make sure you don't forget you need to actually download it. So I've downloaded it. I'm going to come to my monitor tags and I want to look at my tags here. And so if we look, we can see here is the weight. And Hope we can see both of these at the same time here, but uh, here is the uh, weight. Here, here is the load cell. Here's my balance beam with my two load cells attached, and the uh, 
load cell value The load cell value with nothing attached is reading about, uh, and we get I get a lot of fluctuation on this. I'm not sh quite sure where this this is noise coming into the system. So what we have to do is kind of average this. So you see it's bouncing between about 4,000 and almost 4,400. So I'm going to select uh, load cell one to be about 4,200, and load cell the right load cell is about. Um, it's it's about 5200 okay so um, so I'm going to scale this so I have to scale it now the weight that I'm using the weight that I'm using is a uh, 4.79 uh, weight here it's I mean it's supposed to be uh, five pounds but it actually uh, after calibrating it it turned out to be only about 4.79 pounds there so we're putting it on the load cell so we're splitting it we're splitting it in half so we want to measure it and we want to get it balanced so it's equal on both sides and so there would be two and a half pounds on the left side two and a half pounds on the right side but since it's not actually five pounds it's 4.79 then that means that our weight that means that our weight there is actually on each end 2.395 pounds with the weight on and so um, with with the weight off I already said I had like 42 milliamps for the left and I guess about 52 for the right and then for the, uh, if we look up here, if I put the weight back on, so if I set the weight back on here, we can see it's going to jump up. So it's jumping up to about somewhere around 47 for the left. And about, uh, or 4,700, 4,700, uh, and then 5,700 for the right. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pull up my octave calculator here, and I'm going to calculate then my slope for the left side is going to be the to test weight, which is the 2.395 uh, divided by the 4,700 minus the 4,200. And so that gives me my first slope is going to be uh, 0 0.0479. Okay, so that's the slope of the first one. Um, and the second one. is going to be 57 divided by 52 hundred so that's going to be 0 0.004790 zero zero, okay. which turns out to be exactly the same Seven nine zero zero. So it turns out to be exactly the same. But the intercept, okay, the the intercepts then B. Okay, so B is equal to the y one minus m times x one. And so for B one for the left side. All right, that's going to be, there's no weight. Y1 is zero because there's no weight applied. So uh, B1 is simply going to be M1. It's actually 
minus M1 times the low weight, which is 4,200, which is minus 20.118. So that's minus 20.118 pounds. The units for that would be pounds. And then B2 is going to be M2 minus M2 times the 5,200 which is minus 24.9 and again the units for that technically are pounds the units for my M's are pounds per, per micro amp okay. and so if we come back in here now I'm gonna go offline come over to my routine and I'm gonna scale this Okay, so if we look at the scaling, now the scaling was uh, 0 0.00479. So if you notice here, I'm dividing by 1,000. So um, the reason, you know, so that just gets rid of that 0, 0. I, I could put it in 0, 0 0.00479. I think that was it, right? 479, yeah. So we could just kind of put it in there and not divide by a thousand. And then we needed the B. The B was minus 20.1 pounds. Minus 20.1 pounds. Okay, but you don't actually put the units in here, but this weight then is going to be in pounds. And then this one here, same sort of thing. So it's going to be 0 0.00479 times the right value of the load cell and minus 24.9 pounds. Okay. And so then I'm going to download the program again. And so now with nothing attached, you can see the weight. Again, the, the weight kind of fluctuates um, quite a bit there, uh, but it's, it's bouncing between about one and a half to minus something. So, so the, the weight's effectively zero. And then if I put my weight on there, it should be 4.79. And so again, you can see it bouncing around quite a bit there, but uh, you can see that if you average that, the weight would be about 4.79. All right, so when, uh, when we wanna create programs or something, remember you wanna kite and come up here and widen your tools so that you have full view of all your tools. And what I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to add in my uh, my hold in, my seal in circuit. So I'm going to add a rung. Okay. And uh, I, it actually added it below the top rung. I want it on the top rung. So I'm going to drag it up here to the top rung. And I'm going to put in my stop bits. So now notice here, I'm gonna have, I have my actual stop bit, which is my physically wired stop bit. And then I have my virtual stop bit. My virtual stop bit is just a, uh, is gonna be through the HMI. So when we create our HMI, we're gonna be able to start and stop it through buttons on the touch screen of our HMI uh, or on our computer screen of our HMI. So I have stop bits are always wired in series. Then I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna add my start bit. So I'm gonna have my start bit and then I'm gonna choose a drop down branch and I'm gonna drag the start into that. 
okay and I forgot when I created my tags I also wanted to create a uh, virtual relay which of course again is also a boolean so we're gonna add that and so um, so now I've got this drop down but before I add the virtual I'm gonna add my virtual start so I got a virtual start and a virtual stop that are going to be enabled through an HMI screen. Okay, and so notice the virtual, the starts always go in parallel. Now, if I come over here and I click on this branch again, watch how it gives it this sort of stair step sort of shape. I don't really like that. There's nothing programming, program, programmatically wrong with that, but I just don't like it. So I, if you come right here, you click on this corner and do a right click and it says add branch level, le add branch level, it'll actually make it nice and straight. And then we want to just come down here and I'm going to put my virtual relay then. So I'm going to select the virtual relay and then over here of course we need a relay which is going to be the virtual relay so remember anytime you're doing a seal in whatever this item here is that's got to be your seal in bit these have to match whatever name you give this or output or whatever that you're using for this seal in they have to match it's critical that they match or it's not a seal in all right, so we went ahead and, and did that seal in there. All right, so now that we have our virtual relay, we're going to use that to actually enable our compute statements. And so we can download this and test this. So there's our code, and of course it's not moving now because it's not been enabled. Now, since we've got our uh, stop bit here, we're going to have to force this. So if we, uh, until we get our HMI built, we're just going to kind of, we can test this by just doing a right click on this and do a toggle bit, and that will force that on. And then we can press our green start button on our controller and we can engage this and now our system is uh, weighing and we can set our weight on top of there and see that it's uh, measuring you know about 4.9 pounds then if we want to we can come back here and toggle this bit back off and it will hold it at whatever weight it was at which I had just taken the weight off so it's effectively at, at zero or close to zero all right so now what we want to do is we're going to build the HMI so I'm going to open up factory talk so I'm going to come down here to my window and type in factory talk and select factory talk view studio all right, now it's very important um, that when you do this, you have plenty of time. Um, one of the things about this software is it saves it on the C drive and your C drive will get wiped. So you have to like, if you wanna save it, you have to exit out of the program completely and then go in to the Windows File Manager and locate your files. It's actually an entire directory and create your uh, images there. All right, so when you open up uh, the Factory Talks View Studio, uh, there's a few uh, existing kind of given demos there, but we just want to create a new one. So we're going to select New, and we're going to give it a name. So this is going to be our uh, load cell bar system or um, and 
and then you can select your screen. Now for now I'm just going to select um, a standard computer screen. So the PV Plus or uh, touchscreen HMIs provided by Alan Bradley, but we're just going to just program this right on our current screen at a resolution of 1280 by 1024 and we're going to say create. Alright, so uh, once uh, the factory talk has opened, it may take a little while for it to open up, but then we want to go to communication setup. So we're going to come over here and and select communication setup. We're going to open this up. And we need to create a new configuration. And what we want to do here is we need to add our PLCs. Uh, so I'm going to go to the runtime target. And I'm going to come to Ethernet. And I'm going to right click Add Device. Now, to figure out which device we have, we have to come back to RS Links. So we're going to come back to RS Links and we're going to look up our PLC that we're talking to and we're going to look at the Ethernet card and we find the Ethernet card on here. It's a 1769L23E-QB1 Ethernet port. So we're going to um, go 1769, and I believe that they're under Ethernet IP devices, but we scroll down to 1769, L23E QB1 Ethernet port. So again, look at your RS links, and you see that 1769, L23E. 23E-QB1 Ethernet port. That is our device we select. Okay, So we need to do a plus there and then you need to pick your revision. We're using revision 20 and then you get the OK button and you can select that. And then we need to put the IP address of our PLC in there. So it's going to be 10.201.205 and again, we you know we need to look at RS links here. So notice um, a couple of things. Number one, there's your IP address. So I've got 201.154 is my IP address. And notice that my Ethernet port is in 01. So it's in uh, listed as 01 in there. So we need to select slot one. Okay. Now we apply that. And give it a little a uh, little bit here, and it should come up. And uh, I'm going to come over here now to device shortcuts, and I'm going to add that. And this is just going to be my load cell PLC. And I'm going to come over here to my device and click on that. I'm still waiting for the back plane to come up there. Oh, I typed in the wrong address. I just see that now. Um, I never finished typing in. It was uh, 154 was the address. That's why it's not coming up. So I'll type that back in and give it a chance to refresh here. Still not coming up here. 